So after that job, that job, it was hard to top that job when it was so awesome. I worked a bunch of odd jobs on uh, Craigslist, like one day jobs. Um, I was a mover for one day, which I actually didn't have much of a problem with. It was actually not that bad, like lifting stuff and putting it into a truck. And I, it was paid like 12 bucks or something decent. Um, but I think, cause I had like a sept, I had my septum pierced. This is supposed to be my nose and a, a ring. I was kind of like dressed like punk. So I think the guy didn't like me because I told him like, hey, if you ever need me again, you can do me again. But he did never call me again. So I don't think he liked me for whatever reason. Uh, another one day job. I know there were like three. I don't remember the other one, but the one that always sticks in my memory, it was window cleaning. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh God! It was again just another terrible boss. Actually, this is just a terrible system. So I find this job on Craigslist, and uh, I'm like, okay, that sounds like a, a blue collar job. I could do that. And uh, so there's like these training videos to teach you how to do it and stuff. And I'm like, after I finish them all and like these questionnaires, they're like, I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to to get trained in person now. And they tell me on the phone, they're like, they're like, oh, you're ready to do the job by yourself now. I'm like, wait, what? Uh, don't I need to get trained in person? They're like, no, we 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 run this remotely. We don't have any people there. We we're in we're in Salt Lake City, Utah, and you're in Texas. So uh, so yeah, just get the stuff from the other guy who used to work, and uh, you'll be in ship shop shape. And I was just like. How oh, the fuck am I supposed to work without help? These stupid videos, they show you like the techniques and stuff, but I don't know in practice. I don't have anybody to confirm that I'm doing a good job. I do have a high standard of excellence, even though I sometimes abuse some of my positions. Um, so I get like, and the soap I get from this, the guy who used to work there is Dawn soap, which I feel like is just not right. I feel like you don't put that on windows, but, uh, but you know, I just, I just take it as it is. And, there was a sweet ladder that you got that was like this it could like it was a multi-function ladder like it could be like that or it could go straight up so that was pretty sweet to have we we used to go on our roof later um so my the job i went to i i i entered the house with my equipment and stuff i'm like okay what windows do you want clean she's like yes all the windows of course and uh have you done this before? Because the last guy who came here never did it before, and then he left the job without without finishing. And yeah, so you've done this before, right? And I have a thing where I just want to be. I just want to look like I'm. I can do things well, and I don't want to be like I hate being in training. I don't want ever want somebody to tell me, oh, he's in training. So I just told him like, yeah, I've done this before. Yeah, sure. So I'm like, I definitely can't do what this lady just said and just not finish this job. Um, so of course it's my first time doing it. So I'm like trying to figure out how to, how to even just do it at all. I like do this weird, I mean, I practice at home a little bit. So I got a little bit of the idea. We had to have this like technique where you're like go around and around the window and make sure you clean it all off. And I mean, I did the few, the, the front screen door as well, but it was taking me a while. Um, the scary part was going on these like side roofs. You're climbing on this ladder and climbing on top of the roof and the ladder isn't even secure. I don't even know like ladder technique or anything. So I'm like, what the fuck? What if I fall? I'm like, this is dangerous. I don't even know what I'm doing. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I'm like, God damn it. Um, later in the job, there's this, there was this in indoor window that I was cleaning and, uh, and when I would try to lift up the, the the window, it broke. the The mechanism broke, and I kept trying to fix it. But there's nothing I can do to fix it. So I think I told the lady, and she's like, she's like, "What? What? Well, you need to pay for that. You need to pay for it now." And then I called my like boss or whatever the hell he, whoever the guy that guy was, and he's like, he's like, "Make sure you get the check from her," and we're not gonna pay for that window. So there's this instant conflict created on this newbie. 
and I'm just like my stress levels are just really high super high from this um, and just to make things worse I'm cleaning this one window and there's like this scum like I keep doing it just like how I know and it, it stays like this weird cloudiness I'm just like I don't know what's wrong I called the guy on the phone he's like he's like oh just do it again he's like and I tell him that there's Dawn soap. He's like, Dawn soap? Like, he's kind of confused, but he just tells me, oh, if, if it's if it's cloudy, that means there's moisture on the between the, the panes of glass, and there's nothing we can do about it. So I try to tell the lady that, and she's not having it again. It's just, it's just, this, it's just too much. Too much for me. I'm like, fuck this. I don't give a shit. I'm done. I'm, I don't even, I, I think there's a few more windows, but they're like super high up. I'm just, there's no way. This is, uh, fuck this shit. This is so dumb. So I, I don't even finish the job when I leave. Um, so I call the guy on the phone. I'm like, yo, man, like, I didn't, you know, I, I did that job. So, you know, you need to pay me for that. But I'm done. I can't work here anymore. And he's like, what? Why not? And I was like, that was too stressful. I can't, I can't work not trained, not being properly trained. And, uh, but I told him like, well, I worked seven hours, so, you know, just send a check to wherever. And he's like, no, that job's supposed to take four hours. He's like, you know, I can only pay you for four hours. I'm like, I worked seven hours. I've never been trained in this job. I worked those hours. It was super stressful. Just give me the money and, and, and go. He's like, he's like, you know what? Just to teach you a lesson, I'm not going to pay you at all. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm just going to, yeah. And that's it. And that's what he did. He just didn't pay me at all for doing that fucked up shit. I was so just, oh, because he, he's like, oh, we already lost money with you because you broke the window. Just such bullshit. Like, how do you deal with somebody like that? I went to the Better Business Bureau and I filed a complaint. Um, but they replied saying they didn't have enough information about his business to, to do anything about it. So it was like his business doesn't even exist. This guy was just taking advantage of other kids and me too. It was just, it was just terrible. Literally, if I ever see that guy in person, I will be the shit out of him, and I will steal my seventy dollars that he owes me. I will go into his wallet and take the money he owes me, and I'll also beat the shit out of him. Yes, if that if I ever end up in in Salt Lake City for some reason, and I could somehow find him, that'll happen. Um. What was my next job? So those were the odd job times. My next job was uh, at the airport. So it seemed pretty sweet. Um, I'm telling you all my weed anecdotes because I don't really care. I'm pretty open about that. But I'm not telling you all my sexual anecdotes, which there's plenty of those too, but I'm just omitting those completely out of this. Um, so there, uh, I had to work at the airport. I got this job like stocking stuff. But they're really high clearance about things. Uh, I had to get a drug test. And I was like, oh shit, I've been smoking weed for like every day for like a long time now. Like, oh God. Um, but I've done this before. I've passed a drug test, but by smoking a lot. At Target, I had to take a drug test. Um, but what I did was I ran, ran a bunch on a treadmill and then I drank a ridiculous amount of water like unhealthily like where I could have drowned before before the test and I was okay and I thought maybe because the girl who's testing me like seemed to like me so I was like wondering if if that was why I passed but I think but this time I just kind of trusted my intuition I was all into my intuition at the time I was like it's like you know all I'm gonna do is just drink a little bit of water before the test so all I did was drink two bottles of water right before the test and what do you know I passed it's crazy I know people take tr crazy detox and do and bring in fake pee, but mine was so simple. I kind of like thought about it and I read about it. I was like, if your if your urine sample has some sort of like, the only problem with drinking too much water is if it doesn't have enough like urea or whatever, then then they have to like retest you. So I didn't want to water it down too much, but um, you can dilute it easily. All the like the weed stuff, it it easily dilutes enough. Like there's also a threshold it needs to be to count as as a drug. So if you diluted it but not too much, 
you could easily be within that limit where they won't sense, you know, the, the drug in your body. So I got past that and uh, it was kind of cool. I got this badge where I got to in, I had to go through the, the line, the security every day, but because I worked there and I had this little badge, I even was allowed to cut past the other people in line. It was pretty sweet because I had to get to work on time. So I'm like, oh, oh, showing my badge. Like, oh, I got to go past, got to go past. And then they barely check you because I work there. <laughs> the rest of my life, they've always checked me so hard and, like, abused me at, at the TSA has. But uh, but while I worked there, they were totally cool with me. Even pilots. I mean, I got to cut in front of the pilots as well. Sorry, my mind is kind of skipping around. Uh, and I would bring my backpack. I was all into crystals at the time. I don't know what kind of backpack that was. And I had all these crystals and rocks in my bag. Because so I like meditate and stare at the sun during my breaks. And my backpack would go through the security just fine. Like I always thought like maybe they sensed there was something weird. But no, it was totally fine. So I had to like restock chips and things. Uh, and I kind of liked it because I was independent. I like to talk to people. My favorite was actually this older lady... That was just like this she was silly as hell she was just crazy and so she was just like we would just like joke around and just make fun of people uh, uh and you know i just didn't like waking up so early i think i had to be there at like six or seven and it's and i had to drive a little bit of ways to get there and I just moved moved to the new place because I got kicked out because my I was living with an ex girlfriend and she she like just didn't want me to live there so she got the landlord to kick me out so I got kicked out. Um, so I was living in a new place and I just wanted to rest so I quit that job and I just like I slept a ridiculous amount of hours after afterwards. Um, the next job I got after that so I didn't apply to any jobs for a month. So I had a month off, which was amazing. And when I felt the intuition to apply, I applied to two jobs. And one of the jobs called me right away. And uh, it was the owner of this pizza shop in downtown. And they're like, yeah, I saw that you said you liked making bread. So like, yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't you come down and come out for an interview? Hop dotty. Uh, so that place was pretty cool. There was, so it was downtown. It was a super busy pizza place, like at least at night. Um, and so basically everything around us is our bars. So there's bar and bar and bar and we're pizza, which goes, goes together pretty well. And so basically it was kind of busy throughout the night, but at the, at the, at like, 2 a.m. when everything closes was the rush. So everybody's in line and wants their pizza, they're drunk and they're acting like ridiculous a lot of times. What I loved is that I got to hear the conversations of people sometimes. My, my, I mean, my, my favorite was hearing people who, who introduce themselves. They're like, hi, you're, I'm Johnny. Oh, I'm Jenny. So it's like people of the opposite sex introducing themselves the first time and they're just like you maybe say like a few sentences back and forth and then they're making out in the line for pizza like how romantic is that i mean i tell you and you get to hear the whole conversation what a what a what a great way um i liked that i got, when i would work on the pizza trailer it was kind of cool you're just your few guys that worked with like three guys work there at a time it's kind of like our own mini pizza place and we kind of you get to harass people. What was really cool there is you couldn't, you didn't have to take people's shit. Our managers were all down. If, if somebody was acting ridiculous, you just kicked them out or yelled them out. A lot of times hobos would be like, hey, give me some money to people in our line. And you're allowed to say, get the fuck, fuck off. Get the fuck out of here. The police were cool with us, I guess, for some reason, because we'd give them pizzas. We'd just give them free pizza. Like, that was the policy. If it's a cop, give them free pizza. And... And back then, I was like, well, how would you do that? Why don't you have them pay? But now it totally makes sense to me. Now, I don't know why I see it, because obviously you get them on your side, and that's that's nice. 